Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the new AI functions we have available to us in Excel thanks to a recent add-in that uses ChatGPT. But before we get into that, please, if you've not subscribed to the channel already, please hit that subscribe button below. And if you enjoy this video, please don't forget to hit that like button. So the first thing we're going to need to do with, or in order to get access to these new functions, is go to the Home tab in your ribbon at the top of the page, and then go all the way over to the right hand side, well particularly in my case, and click on Add-ins, and you'll see you get this pop-up. So for me, ChatGPT has already been installed, however, assuming you haven't already got this installed, you just need to go to the More Add-ins, which will give you this pop-up. And you can see we've got office add-ins here and simply search chat hit the little search icon and i think it's the second or th yeah the third icon we've got there is chat gpt for excel so if you click on add that will get it installed and you'll then have it available in your add-ons uh, like we just saw i already had i can't remember off the top of my head if you need to close excel and then reopen before they become available so if this doesn't work first time then obviously suggest giving that a go so as you can probably see on the screen we have five tabs at the bottom here each containing uh, a different one of these new ai functions and if we were to go into my answer box at the top here and type equals AI, you can see how we've now, or these are all of those functions that are now available thanks to that add-in. So the first one we're going, we're going to look at, as you can see titled on the page, is AI.ask. So simply what this allows you to do is ask a question. And as you can see, just above where I've entered that formula, we've got a question of when was Microsoft Excel first available? To access the relevant function, and you can see it's already been highlighted there, uh, but we can continue typing it, the type dot <clears throat> ASK for ask, hit tab, and you can see obviously it's selected that formula. All we need to do is select the cell reference, in this case, contain, that contains our question, close our uh, brackets, hit enter, and you can see at first it's given that busy, but very quickly after it's given us a result. And let's just do a wrap text here. Oh, and merge as well, so you can see that. You can see we've got a result for our question. So Microsoft Excel was first released in 1985. And of course, yes, yeah, so you go and change your question that you have here. I can't think of one on the fly, uh, but the formula will continue to load and give you a response to the question. So particularly useful if you have uh, a workbook where you might have users who could have questions or you're wanting just to offer the general ability to ask a question. So that is our first function. The next one we're gonna look at is fill. So what fill allows us to do is pretty much fill in the blanks using some existing data. So for me, you can see we have three columns. We've got city, country, and population. And obviously you can see we've got all of our cities here. However, we've only populated the first two rows for country and population. And if you're anyone like me, uh, your geography around the world isn't the best. So rather than keep going to Google to find the country and the population, um, and I've just stopped myself there because I realized I got the word population, but we don't want that. Let's call this uh, region. Uh, so sorry, as I was saying, rather than going to Google to find out the country and region for each of your cities, we can now use one of those AI functions to populate it for us. So we'll do equals AI dot, and this time we're going to use the word fill. And I've just hit into there as well. And you can see there's two inputs that it requires us to enter or provide. The example and the next part will be partial. So for us, we're just going to provide these top three rows, including the headers, as our example, so it can see what information we're after and where we've already provided it. We'll do a comma. And then for the second part, in the partial, we'll provide, obviously, these, well, not obviously, <laughs> but our uh, four remaining cities that we want to get information for. We'll close brackets and hit Enter. And you can see initially get the load. And then once it's ready, it's provided us that additional information. So we can now see for Rome, we've got the country of Italy and the region of Europe. And as you can see, it's one of those spill functions where we've just entered the formula once 
and is expanded into the range that is required to provide the additional information. So again, I've used this for city, country, region, uh, but I'm sure there'll be many other scenarios that you can use this where there is a pattern to be recognized and provide the additional results. The third option or formula we're gonna look at is extract. So this is particularly useful in the Zahara scenario that we've got here, uh, where we've got a, a list of, well, well, not really four sentences, but we've got four strings of text, uh, of which a name is captured within each string. And what we want to do is simply extract the name, as you can see I've mentioned here, so that we've got a list of all of our names corresponding in our output section here. So previously, you could have done this by doing, and you may still do, using a multitude of mid, left, right, formulas and functions, and obviously searches as well to try and find names, um, if that's even possible in this scenario. Uh, but we've now got obviously this a lot easier way to do it because our AI function recognizes what is a name and obviously what is the, should we call it, the text that you want to drop. So really simply, all we do here is go equal AI game. This time we'll use the extract function and we're gonna select our range. So you can see we've got, we're gonna select all four rows in our example. We'll do a comma and we'll select then obviously the value or the cell containing the information that we wish to extract. Close brackets and hit enter. And that will quickly load for us. And you can now see it is giving us our nice concise list of names. So another scenario this could be useful is if you're working with email addresses and you want to extract the name from the email address. And I'll leave you because there's obviously again another multitude of ways to do this to look at other types of information that you could extract rather than using just the name. A fourth function is going to be translate. So again, a really useful function if you're working in a, uh, a large corporation where you've got multiple countries and need to translate text or just useful to have to hand as well and a great addition uh, in your report where and if required. So you can see we've got a source at the top here and I've just provided some English text here, uh, just giving us a nice simple uh, couple of sentences. And what we want to do is translate this into French so that we have the French translation below. So once again, we'll do equals AI full stop. And this time we're gonna go and use translate. So let's type translate, hit tab. We've now entered the function. And again, it requires the two inputs. So the first part is going to be our value, which is gonna be our source at the top here, comma, and then we'll select the word French or more so this, uh, the cell containing our uh, desired language. Close brackets, hit enter. And once it's ready, you can see we now have our French translation. And I don't think I've done this in our previous examples, but let's say we now want this in Italian. Now I'm making sure I spell it correctly. You can see all we need to do is change our, the, the language, desired language that we have there and it'll do that just for us. Let's try one more, let's go Spanish, out of interest. And yep, there we go, we have now got Spanish in there. So you could obviously improve upon this greatly by having a drop down here, giving the user the ability to select a list of desired languages. And it's probably always worth mentioning, although the model is looking really well and I've got to say, I'm by no means an expert in translation, uh, but it's always worth obviously doing some tests to ensure that the translation has gone through as desired. Our fifth and final function we'll be looking at today is for table. So the general purpose and use for this will be is providing a table based on an input such as the one we have here, which is really a question to list of 10 biggest countries of the world by population. So again, another task that we might have previously had to do, uh, going to Google and obviously doing a search. Now we can simply uh, do that within one function. So we'll do equals AI dot table, hit tab. And all we're simply gonna do here is select the cell reference containing our question, close brackets, hit enter, and you can see what it's now done is given us not only a list of those 10 business biggest countries, but it's also provided the population for each country 
using a consistent uh, point in time, which was 2021. And of course, we wanted the top 10. So what it has done for us as well is provided a ranking down the left hand side there as well. So we just make that ever so bigger so we can fit it onto the page. And there we go. We have our fifth and final example function using table. So I hope you enjoyed that video and it introduced you to these new functions that we now have available to us thanks to the add-in that we added at the beginning of the video. If you have any questions at all with this or future videos please just drop a comment below the applicable video and I will get back to you as soon as I can and lastly if you do enjoy these videos, please don't forget to hit that like button. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it does help that all important YouTube algorithm enabling other people to also find these videos as well.